let's talk about releasing your inner gangster. One of the things that this channel was founded on was hustling. It was founded on doing something different, doing something a little off of the beaten path, doing something that you normally don't do. And one of the things, and this is the thesis that I bring, bring this video to you on, is behaving like a crackhead without the high. And what, uh, what do I mean by that? One of the things that I've noticed when I was living in the hood was that crackheads, drug addicts, can make a lot of money to feed their habit. I was watching on YouTube this one guy, he talked about that he made $180,000 a year to feed his habit. And I was like, that's astounding. But he didn't do that as a normal person. He even remarked about if I could do that normally, my life would be great. So I submit to you crackhead behavior without the element of the drug. I want you guys to bear with me. If you can reach in, because once again, when a person gets on drugs, they're highly motivated to get these drugs. They're highly motivated to do whatever they have to do, whether that is sex work, whether that's crime, they do what they have to do to continue to get that drug. Now, if you can tap into that motivation without a drug habit, AKA tap into your inner gangster, then you will be able to do remarkable and tremendous things that are just crazy. And you gotta tap into your inner gangster. You got to be able to reach deep into you to motivate, because this is one of the things I see a, is a big problem with many people, is a lack of motivation a lack of get up and do something because there's currently a thread on reddit that many people do not believe in the value of hard work there's so many people who and once again we need to define hard work before we even have that conversation because many people feel that if they apply effort which may not be defined as hard work that they should get some results because essentially they just showed up and you got a lot of the people out there who don't know what strategic hard work is so I'm going to give you a breakdown of what strategic hard work is you first of all you have a goal you have a goal of something that a very firm very tangible goal it's like I want to make hundred thousand dollars this year by selling my widget in my Shopify store that's a tangible goal that's like okay I want to make a hundred thousand dollars how and this is very important how are you gonna make the hundred thousand dollars many people get into this law of attraction stuff of all right I want to make a hundred thousand dollars then they sit down and they fold up their hands and they don't do anything the law of action is greater than the law of attraction. The law of action makes the law of attraction come alive. The law of action creates tremendous polarity. Because when you're doing something, you're gonna yield the result. So hard work is having a tangible goal, an action plan, and every day you wake up, you contribute efforts to achieving that goal. That's hard work. Hard work isn't because you have this suck job at Taco Bell, and you go in there and you, you, because you, I mean, literally, 
on the cash register, they have labels. You don't even have to think about what someone ordered. It's like, oh, just press this taco and, you know, it'll calculate how much they owe you. So, you know, fast food work is not glamorous, but whenever I go into one of these joints and I look at them, they're not like in there busting. Let me go ahead and explain to you what hard work is. And you wanna do this. You wanna work so hard that you press against your limits. You want to work so hard that you get to the point where you pass out. Let me say this again. You want to work so hard that you pass out. This is why my storage auction business was successful because I put strategic hard work into it. And I remember many a night that I would sit on my bed and I would reach down to take my shoes off. Then the next thing I know, it's like six o'clock in the morning because I literally passed out on my bed passed out good sound sleep because if you're a person with sleeping issues let me go ahead and write rather a prescription of doing some hard work that will solve a lot of those sleeping issues because your mind is busy because you are sitting there imagining all these scenarios you're imagining all of these possibilities and it keeps you up, but you're not working on it. And your mind knows that you are slipping. Your mind knows that you're half-stepping. Your mind knows this. And this is why I write this prescription of hard work. So many people are trying to get away from hard work and it's human nature. It's human nature to take the path of leaf resistance. It's human nature to get in a situation where you could get great benefit from minimum effort. That's human nature. And one of the things that I want to present to you in tapping into your inner gangster, because, you know, I don't, this isn't to suggest that criminal acts are good. This is to recognize that the best criminals work hard and let me say this again the best most successful criminals work hard they put in the work you know to become a successful drug dealer selling on a massive scale you are not just sitting on your butt selling drugs you're planning you're strategizing you're collaborating with other gang members. There's a lot that goes into this. So even to be the best criminal, you still have to work hard. You still have to tap into your inner gangster. You still have to come forward with something to the table versus your wishes and desires. And this is one of the things that gets so many people into trouble. They come to the table with their wishes, their desires, what they want, how they want to live, with no action plan whatsoever. Essentially, this is what I call the Instagram, the real housewives of Bel Air society. You will see someone else living the life that you want to live. And all you will see is the results. Like all these women, who married these rich guys, these rich guys had to do something to get that money. Unless they were, you know, inherited it and they were born wealthy, which is some of the cases. But if it's a case of a, a one of these chicks who's married a first generation rich person, they had to work. They had to work. And this is what I'm telling you guys that you gotta put in the work. And one of the first questions I'm gonna get is, I don't know what I want to do. This is a huge problem. And let me tell you where this is rooted in. It's rooted in a lot of laziness. We have Google, we have Bing, 
we have Yahoo. We have all these search engines. And if you're in a position where you're sitting there like, yo, Glendon, I'm ready to start doing something, but I don't know what to do. You're scared to work hard. You're scared to do something and not get the desired result, so therefore you don't do anything. Because if you would open yourself up to, I'm gonna try something, and I'm gonna work as hard as I can on it, you will get results. When I was in that boarding house, when I was that bum, when I was that person of limited success, I wanted to do a lot of things, but I didn't have a blueprint or a pathway. So that's another issue because many folks are ready to put in the work. They just don't have the blueprint. They don't have um, a, a roadmap. And one of the things I'm gonna tell you is if you wake up tomorrow and decide to be successful. It's like, I'm gonna be successful doing X, Y, Z, and I'm willing to put in the work. I'm willing to work seven days a week. You're gonna be successful because once you start to remove time, this is one of the biggest issues why so many people fail. Ridiculously compressed timelines because you saw Hustler G on Instagram do it in three weeks if it takes you more than three weeks, somehow you feel that, you know, it's taking too long. Where's my success, man? Where's my success? I should be successful immediately. I should be successful, you know, within mere weeks. And here's the, the, the truth of the matter is, long-term durable success is a product of years of application years of application once again uh, I'm, I'm talking about foundational principles I'm talking about foundational stuff to give you guys the information that you need to be successful because there are so many folks who are looking for shortcuts who are looking for the cheat code of life they're looking for you know my neighborhood I'm gonna tell you something. It's quiet during the day. You know why? Because everybody's at work or at their business. This is one of the things I want you guys to understand. I want you guys to understand that long-term durable success doesn't come in mere weeks. It doesn't come in mere months. That is a product of years of application. And I know we live in an Instagram, we live in, you know, you know Shopify, we, Amazon FBA, you know, their people are becoming millionaires. And let, let me go ahead and throw this in there really quick. Just because you sell six, seven, eight, ten million dollars worth of product on Amazon does not make you a millionaire. I know people with those kind of numbers and they're not millionaires. You don't want to know why? because their profit margins are so thin that you can cut tomatoes with them. They're not making good profit margins. So that's another thing. It's like, whoa, you know, seller has good, sold $10 million worth of product last year. But seller has good, only made $250,000 take home. That is not how I was brought up how to run a business. And this is one of the things, because I remember years ago, we I had an argument with some people on Facebook and they were talking about these super thin profit margins and based upon the scale of selling thousands and thousands of the, the prop. I mean, that, that's just not good business. That's not good long-term sound business practice. One of the reasons that Apple can, and Google and IBM and all these people can pay their employees so much money is they make good profits. If Apple did not make good profits, they wouldn't be able to pay their people the kind of money they pay them.
It's a very simple equation. We have good profits. We have the best technology. We can hire the best people. We can give them the best salaries. Amazon FBA sellers are not in that situation. They're not tapping into their inner gangster. I will tell you that one of the reasons, because I am a profit margin monster, there's got to be good profit margin in it or I'm not going to do it. And this is how you should set up your business. This is why you need to brand your business. Well, there will be a webinar coming up this end of the month or the beginning of the next month about branding your business. So go below, get on the email list, and you will be alerted to when that goes down. Tapping into your inner gangster is also solving a lot of childhood trauma. There are many people, and this is one of the reasons that so many people in America don't make good money, is they don't feel that they're worth making good money. They don't, they don't feel that they have the worthiness to be making killer money. They don't they don't they don't believe that. They don't see that. They don't feel that. They don't understand the game. Because they don't well, first of all, self-worth. If you grew up in a poor family, the chances of you having negative self-worth or a limited appreciation of yourself are very high. I know of people who were growing up where their parents told them you ain't shit you ain't never gonna be shit and when you are an impressionable child that is damaging parenting that is bad parenting and this is something that if you as a parent you should never ever say to your child you should never because see this is one of my issues that I had to unpack all of that negative programming before I was able to tap into my inner gangster. It is one of the things that you guys have got to do. One of the things that you, you've got to get over. People driving all kinds of crazy today. To tap into your inner gangster, you got to be able to think clearly. And when you grew up in a bad parenting situation, self-worth, id, ego, all of these things are damaged. So you're not operating from optimum human capacity because you have this negative programming that's looping in your brain. There are people right now who are janitors who have the intellectual capacity, they could have been doctors if they had the right environment growing up. That's a damning statement, it's true. There are people out here who are brilliant. There are people out here who have amazing abilities, but because they grew up in a jacked up household, they have a limited view of themselves. They have a limited appreciation of their abilities. They're very limited in how they see themselves and they're very limited in how they approach life. I mean, it is one of the saddest things that you could ever encounter. And there are so many people who are caught up in this because they had bad parents and you don't get to choose your parents. You're just, whatever happens, happens. And we have so many people who are in this situation where that they wanna be successful. They're hungry for success. They're thirsting for success. They're, they would sell their souls for success if they can find the devil and make a deal. And they just don't have the keys they don't have the blueprint so one of the things I'm going to tell you guys if you need therapy go out and get it I went to a therapist if you need someone to talk to it is good money it is because you're it's an investment in you
because once you can clear up some of these negative protocols that were instilled into you by dear old mom, dear old dad, you grew up in a jacked up family, and once you can isolate those bad negative programming and start to remove them and start to replace them with positive programming, you too can be successful. You could too reach into your inner gangster because what happened to me was I was married to someone who was a poor fit for success in life. Um, she was extremely emotional, extremely impulsive. And this is one of the reasons that I don't date impulsive women to this day because impulsive women are led by their emotions. They're not led by reason. They're not led by facts. They're led by their emotion. And this isn't good if you want to be successful because they're going to do things that are contrary to success. They're going to do things that are damaging because they're impulse driven. And one of the things about being successful is being a practical goal driven person. You don't always change your mind. You know, if this shows up, you're not over here, you're not over there. You pretty much rain or shine, you stay on point, you, you stay on your purpose, you stay on your goals. And this is one of the things that's a big problem for a lot of people is that they're easily influenced by impulsive emotional cues. And this is something that you've got to get rid of because let's go ahead back to the crackhead. The crackhead has one impulse to get high. That's it. There is no other reason that these people live. They have this singular pursuit of getting high. What can I do to get money so I can get high? That's the question that they wake up if they sleep. You know, crackheads, drug addicts can stay up for six, seven, eight days in a row, then they just literally crash. But take the lesson from the crackhead without the high. Develop a singular pursuit. What am I gonna do today? I'm gonna do this thing that makes me money. And you're gonna get up and you're gonna do it every day and you're gonna repeat the process six to seven days a week. You're gonna consistently do it. You're gonna consistently put out, do what you need to do. Because this is a lesson that you can learn from crackheads. This is a lesson that you can learn from drug addicts. They have this singular pursuit that makes them perform at an advanced higher level of human performance because they're that motivated by getting high. They're that motivated by their pursuit of getting that drug. They're that motivated. And then you should become that motivated by success. You should become that motivated by changing your life. You should become, because I'm not, I don't do drugs. I'm not a big drinker. I drink a little wine here or there, a few hard liquor drinks on occasion. And success is my drug. You should make success your drug. You should become addicted to success. Once you become addicted to success and doing the things that make you successful, many people will feel that this is unhealthy because another thing that happens is we got a group of people out there who don't feel that you should design your life to get money. And I am not one of those people. I feel those people are misguided. I feel that those people have way too much time on their hands because from where I sit and what I know, money has changed my life. And money can buy happiness. And I'm gonna tell you why money can buy happiness. The more, the less money you have, the more happiness money can buy. Let me put this to you again. The less money that you have, the more happiness that money can buy. Let's say your name is John. And John, you make $25,000 a year. And John, every day is a struggle. 
every day you are struggling. And once again, you get $75,000 a year more money. Now, all of your problems that you had, like trying to pay rent, trying to pay your car note, trying to pay your child support, all that disappears. You cannot tell me that you're not happier at 100K than you were at 25. You cannot convince me that. But you have so many people, because once again, and th this is another barrier to success. This is another barrier to and tapping into your inner gangster. You have many people out there who will say all day long that money cannot buy happiness. They will say it, so you shouldn't be trying to get more money. You shouldn't be trying to tap into your inner gangster. You should just be out here living and struggling. Currently, one of my ex-girlfriends who has a PhD is in a financial free fall. Her university, she used to teach at the university level and they did not renew her contract. And she went into a financial free fall. You know, she tried to get back with me, but you know, I'm not going to, I wasn't in the, you know, I wasn't feeling her like that. Be honest, I wasn't feeling her like that because I knew that she would have to move in with me and I would have to help her with a lot of stuff. And I just wasn't in the mood for that with her. And one of her biggest issues is she's looking at the past versus the future. And this is what happens to people who had a certain level of success. They look at the past and expect the results of the past to continue forth in the future. And that's just not how life works. Just not. And I, I know a lot of people who are in financial duress got bills but don't have enough money to pay their bills they work in two three jobs because once again they, there's all of this stuff there's all of this emotional uh so social signals because one of the things that helped me when i was in that boarding house was i fundamentally changed my programming one of the best lessons to ever happen to me was I got laid off when I was doing an outstanding job. I know that sounds strange to say, but it was one of the best lessons for me. I got laid off, I was the number one salesperson, I was moving more product and they let me go and it taught me a valuable lesson. I wasn't positioned for success in that company because I came in through a temp agency and the people that they kept, they were direct hires. And because I had the stigma of being in a temp agency and coming in, it didn't matter that I was doing a great job. And this is one of the things that I had to learn. This is one of the lessons that I needed because many of you feel that if you do a good job, you're gonna get a cookie, you're gonna get a pat on the head. That's not necessarily the case that isn't the reality of real life and the complexities of real life tend to throw people because you know when my friend my ex she got laid off from the university I mean she went on a tear because she you know she wanted that contract and it was just like you really needed to start hustling in a different direction immediately and this is one of the things that happens to so many people that suffer a setback. By the time their mind clears up, months or years of time could have passed them by that they could have been using to set up another sequence to be setting up another thing. Because they're dealing with the emotional turmoil of that event. Like, you see someone that gets divorced. It can literally take this person three to four years to go back to being normal again. Because it's such a big, devastating, emotional blow. And this is one of the things that I also learned is when stuff starts going bad, to immediately...
immediately start hustling. Immediately. Like when our business, when eBay canceled my eBay account and held on to a lot of money, I, I was mad, I was upset. You know when I started hustling? Two hours after I got the news. I was still going through the emotional whatever, but I started hustling on Craigslist two hours after that went down. Because one of the lessons that I learned is don't wait to start hustling. Start hustling immediately. When something goes down bad, don't sleep on it. I've seen people, like I, I have a friend who, get, who used to work for Sports Illustrated. He got laid off, but he had a lot of Apple stock. They gave him a package, and I kept telling him, dude, you need to find another job ASAP. what he do? He, he took two years off. He tried to start a cake company. Tried he did all of this stuff, wasting time, wasting time. And unfortunately, uh, he had a stroke. He had two strokes and now he's on disability. And all that money's gone, all his Apple stock is gone because he did not start hustling as soon as he should have. If he had started hustling, he may have not even had the stroke. So don't wait to hustle. When bad things happen, immediately start hustling immediately trying to fix the situation because I've seen people get laid off and go on vacation. When you get laid off and your income is coming to a halt, you don't go on vacation, bro. You don't take some time off. And once again, this is because people are not used to working. I had a friend who who said the best time in his life was when he was on unemployment and he had complete and other control of his life and of, and of his time. Once again, I want you guys to hustle hard, tap into your inner gangster during the good times. When you tap into your inner gangster during the good times, this is when you experience long-term success because there are more good times than there are bad unless you just a, a, can't, a person that just has extraordinarily bad luck there is more love than there is hate there is more money than there is lack of money but what you got to do is you got to get on your grind get on your hustle tap into your inner gangster and your inner gangster is what it will liberate you from every woe every financial crisis that you have because when I tapped into my inner gangster I moved away from conventional thinking remember what I told you about I learned that lesson I did a good job and I still got laid off I needed to learn that lesson that taught me that you can still do a good job and things can still go bad. And once again, when that happened, I immediately, because I was listening to Earl Nightingale lead the field, I had the power of your subconscious mind, I had the proper education that I knew that I needed to start working on a solution immediately. Uh, when the dude let me go, I went home to my room and immediately began setting goals. Setting goals, coming up with um, forecasts, figuring out what my next move was going to be. Immediately. I practice what I preach. It's been a long time since I've had such a tur turmoil in my life. But if it ever turmoil was ever to come back to me like that, because I don't even count having a heart attack and a stroke, the turmoil of that event because I was living in the boarding house. I didn't have a lot of money. I was struggling. I had all types of things that were going on. And when I had the heart attack, I was already rich. 
I already built things. I was in the hospital and I had money coming in because I hustled during the good times. You gotta hustle during the good times. This is why so many people who don't hustle, who don't reach their inner gangster, when the bad times hit, what happens is compounding of bad times. Let's say you're not hustling as hard as you need to be. Let's say you're living with a chick, chick and you break up, now you're homeless. Now your car, now your car breaks down. You're homeless, your car breaks down, you can't get to work. So you have a compounding of bad, unfortunate events because you were not hustling during the good times. And it caught up with you. This is how people fall off. This is how people become lifelong poor. This is how people get in a situation